有一年冬天已经大雪封山了，本来路都不通了，有一女女同志得病啊，大出血，一个是一边走一边挖雪，把这同志接到了石泉河。可以说那地方是一个可以洗净人的心灵的地方。经常半夜做梦呢，回去了，而梦见回阿里了，等醒了。枕头都是湿的。我先生回来的时候，走着走着，一下子这个吉普就翻到山，打了三个滚儿，到了山下。他说：“这翻车了。”要他说：“我那是显微镜，怎怎么样？坏了没有？”司机就发火，司机说：“你还管什么显微镜呢？只要你活着就行了。”你说我先生在这个情况下还要包围着他，显微镜。当地的大夫曾经跟我说，基本上第一胎都很难存活。那么现在的二十六周、二十七周、二十八周的早产都能得以存活。组团式的援藏对整个西藏的儿科医疗，我觉得就是一个天翻地覆的变化。老百姓牵着马要请你出诊的时候，你就毫不犹豫的就要跟着去，哪怕是最危险的地方。我们探亲回去了以后，完了以后孩子不认，我们妈就把照片拿来说：“这就是你的爸爸，这就是你的妈妈。”孩子根本就不认。完了，儿子到现在跟我也不是太亲。说我小的时候，你们哪儿去了？这里面来还跟你吗？不和你。阿龙呢？阿龙。阿龙现在怎么了？他的女朋友以前在那个糖尿病治疗杂志。要是张杰在干什么？啊？他们老关心这些问题。那你为什么老关心他这些问题啊 ？Now e i g Ye Ruling finds it difficult to have a conversation with his daughter. Like me, I feel like I don't have anything to say. I feel like I'm quite sad. I'm eating. Do you want to eat? 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 嗯、你再吃点菜吧，待会儿吧，饿的时候再吃吧。Ye Lan shares a close bond with her mother, but her father's like a stranger to her. It's a state of affairs that has been upsetting Ye Ruling for many years. It's July, and Ye Ruling has been invited by the Beijing Municipal Health Commission. To say some words of encouragement to an aid to Tibet medical team being sent to the region from the capital. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Yes. 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 But this time, he feels different. The new generation of aid Tibet doctors reminds Ye of himself 50 years ago. In 1970, he was working at the Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences. He and his wife, who he'd married just three months earlier, left Beijing and traveled for nearly two months to the Machala coal mine in Leiwuchi County, Kamdo, in Tibet. 这个煤矿啊，在一个孤零零的山头上，海拔呀五千二百四十米，超过五千米啊，就是生命的禁区，呼吸困难，这个喘不上气，头啊剧烈疼痛，
，走路啊就像在踩点棉花上一样的，深一脚浅一脚，晚上不能平卧，只能坐着睡觉，靠在被子上。At such a high altitude and with the limited availability of medical care, life was dangerous for the coal miners. So the specialists from the nation's top medical school were in great demand as soon as they arrived. He said, "You are from Beijing. You came here. After that, we were going to the coal mine. We were going to the coal mine." Despite the dangers underground, the miners never failed to look for a piece of the finest coal, which they would leave outside Ye Ruling's door after a shift. These offerings of coal were a symbol of their deep affection for the doctors. In 1972, Ye Ruling's only daughter was born in Beijing. His wife took the decision to leave the baby in the care of her parents. The little girl was three before Ye met her for the first time. <laughs> Ye Ruling missed out on his daughter's first cry and first words. He couldn't be there for her during kindergarten, primary school, and high school. He didn't even attend her college graduation or wedding. As a result of these numerous disappointments during 30 years, the daughter became estranged from her father. My normal family life is like this. My husband is like my father, my other people, and my other people. We are in this state. It's my normal state. Then two people come back and say, my father is your father. You are very confused. I don't know how to go. He has been leaving. Ye Ruling was involved in numerous groundbreaking advances in healthcare in Tibet. In late 1973, he was appointed to the Tibet Autonomous Region People's Hospital, becoming the region's first neurosurgeon. He remembers how, during one particular operation, he lost his temper. By the end of the 1990s, the Tibet Autonomous Region People's Hospital had been transformed from a single-story clinic into a modern grade A tertiary hospital. After retiring as vice president in 2000, Ye Ruling returned to Beijing. By then, his daughter was almost 30. Ye was desperate to finally become a proper father. But Ye Lan found this newfound interest hard to accept. My女儿从生下来就跟姥姥生活 Ye Ruling has been invited by the education department to give a talk to some school children. For the very first time after all these years, his daughter has come along to listen to him describe his experiences working in Tibet. Many things have no right and wrong. It's just in different times and different angles to say that everyone has a different choice. 
，现在就是对很多东西稍微的释然一些了啊。谢谢大家。Zheng Wangqi is a member of the Fifth Aid Tibet Medical Team from Liaoning Province. She has spent over 13 months in Nagchu, protecting the life and health of newborn babies. Every baby carries the hopes of a whole community. This一分钟能给他成功的建立起呼吸啊、心跳啊这些，相对来讲成活的几率就很大。一二三七，一二三七，一二三七，一比一万肾上腺素，一毫升。我不愿意看到任何一个孩子的死亡。就我想让每一个
Grandmother Drolka decides to break the silence. She announces that she has chosen a name for the baby, Tseten Pelmo, which means longevity. The desperate family have placed all their hopes in the aid to bet doctor. In late April, while most of China is basking in warmth, the Jiangtan Plateau remains covered in snow. The unforgiving environment was once a major contributing factor to an infant mortality rate that was significantly above the national average. In the past two years, aid from Liaoning province has helped to significantly upgrade the 1,500 square meter pediatric ward. The aid Tibet doctors have also introduced numerous innovations, including blood transfusion operations for newborns and enteral and internal nutrition treatment for low birth weight infants. All this has effectively brought infant care on the Changtang Plateau up to the national standard. Not even the coldest plateau can quell the human life force. Encouraged by the doctor's gentle hands, the little girl finally opens her mouth and eagerly sucks up the milk. After 10 days of intensive care, the baby's health has significantly improved. Her skin color has transformed from purple to a healthy, rosy tone. As soon as she hears that her daughter is getting better, Tashi Dradzong rushes back to the hospital. Lovingly, the mother speaks her daughter's name for the first time. She can only hope that it won't be long before her little girl responds to her voice. After nearly two weeks, it's time for Tashi Dradzong to take her daughter home from hospital. Gently, Tashi Dradzong accepts her baby from the doctor. I 
希望未来他很健健康康的长大，那些医生嗯特别好，然后特别感谢他们，特别感谢他们。Tashid Radzong's gratitude to the medical staff is clearly heartfelt. 我觉得这个。每一个孩子，他都是降临到咱们人间的一个小天使。通过我们的治疗，一段时间之后，他能转危为安，不难受了，舒服了，那样对着你笑，这个时候你会很有成就感。Over the past three years, maternal and infant mortality rates in Tibet have fallen by 28% and 15% respectively. Mornings are the busiest time of the day at Samjo's home. A year ago, Samjo's husband passed away. Her daughter and son-in-law run a small shop in the county town. As a result, Samjo feels lonely. Her greatest pleasure was to visit an old friend to chat and relax. <laughs> Samjo is intrigued. She'd like to find out more about the daycare center her friend Padron is attending. Chushui County's daycare center for the elderly is a project initiated by the Aid Tibet team from Jiangsu. In July 2020, the province invested 100,000 yuan in a pilot local meeting place where the elderly could be looked after without having to leave their village. The success of the pilot scheme over the past two years prompted Jiangsu to provide a further 10 million yuan in aid funding. With this, the local daycare model is gradually being expanded and promoted throughout Chushui County. Samjo decides to see the center for herself. She's warmly welcomed by a member of staff, Kelsan Sultan. Everything seems new and unfamiliar to Samjo. Tibetan noodles are being served for breakfast, but she appears uncertain whether she should help herself. Eventually, the sight of the elderly people indulging in lively conversations while enjoying their meal persuades her to grab a bowl of noodles. But before she can start eating, someone else takes the bowl. For Tamjo, who is by nature quite timid, this is an uncomfortable introduction to communal living. Immersed in the novel experiences and surrounded by friends, Samjo quickly settles in. At the end of her first day, 
she feels completely fulfilled. Over dinner, Samjo tries to find out what her daughter thinks about the daycare centre. Uh, Aware that her mother is upset, Tashi Yang Zong decides to visit the new daycare center in person. Tashi Young Zom's apprehensions are soon dispelled by the warmth and sense of joy she finds at the daycare center, and she agrees to enroll her mother. The amount spent by the daycare center is 31 yuan per person per day. However, most of the expenses are covered from the Aid Tibet Fund and by government subsidies. This makes the daycare service accessible to many more elderly people. At the start of another day, it's no longer just the younger members of the family who are getting ready to go out. These elderly people have spoken Tibetan all their life. Now, for the first time, they're learning to write it. Uh, 
In her golden years, the once shy Tsamjo has been given a fresh start in life. Every first working day of the month, the daycare center organizes a party for everyone whose birthday falls within that month. This time it's Samjo's turn, and she's presented with a Hada scarf as a sign of best wishes. The number 80 on the cake doesn't denote anyone's actual age. Rather, it represents a collective wish that every one of the elderly people present lives to at least the age of 80 and enjoys a long and fulfilling life. The elderly daycare center model introduced by the aid Tibet team from Jiangsu has been popularized across Tibet, enriching the lives of many of the region's senior residents. In Tibet, where Kashin Bek disease is prevalent, the highest incidence is in Florong County in Kamdo. Every year since 2019, Fujian Province's Aid Tibet Medical Group has been dispatching specialists to the area. Through outpatient consultations and home visits, they have successfully treated more than 200 patients. This year, a fresh team of Aid Tibet doctors has arrived in Florong County. Luo Funqi and Zhang Jundan are the chief orthopedic surgeon and chief anesthesiologist at Fujian Provincial Hospital. They have traveled across China from Fuzhou to operate on two patients, one elderly, the other very young. The two patients in room 402 at Florong County People's Hospital are 59-year-old Chang Chub and Lo Sang Gelek, who's just 22 months old. Lusan Gelek was born with a large lump on his back. Despite his family's desperate efforts to get medical help, they were initially unsuccessful. Chang Chub shows genuine concern for the well-being of his little roommate. Chang Chub used to operate a successful trucking business, but Kashin Beck disease has caused worsening swelling, stiffening and aching in his knee joints. As a result, he was forced to give up work. At the sight of his truck lying idle, the usually outgoing Chang Chub becomes silent. Feng Qi and Zhang Jundan have driven the 300 kilometers from the airport along the mountain road to Chang Chub's home. Oh. 
这是刚腾的时候烧的for young Lo Sang Galek, being in hospital is a novel experience. These two patients, born nearly 60 years apart, are both about to be operated on for the first time. Losangelic is suffering from a lipoma on his back. He'll be the youngest patient ever to undergo surgery at Lorong County People's Hospital. The little boy, perhaps sensitive to the tension in the atmosphere, starts to cry. As her son is taken into the operating theatre, the mother, Tsering Mutri, appears distraught. <laughs> Inside the room, the medical team are getting ready. For anesthesiologist Zhang Jun Dan, it's a unique challenge to administer an anesthetic at high altitude to such a small child. Outside the operating theatre, the mother waits anxiously. She longs for the moment when the doors will open, yet she fears the possibility of receiving bad news. This <laughs> The operation lasts for over two hours. The lipoma is successfully excised from the child's back. The wound has been meticulously stitched. At the sight of her child, Sering Mutri experiences a profound sense of relief. <laughs> Little Lo Sang Gelek has been quiet since undergoing surgery as he gradually regains consciousness. Chang Chub feels reassured about his own approaching first operation. Luo Fun Chi has designed a specially tailored plan for him, which makes use of a brand new technique. 
都是用了一个膝关节的微串。好处是第一个，它的切口不在正中，我们西藏这边经常要跪拜，啊，如果切口在正中的话，它跪拜的时候会疼痛。第二个，它恢复得更快，那以后参加这个劳动也会更舒服。像邱家顺吗？After a day of bed rest, little Los Angelic is back to his mischievous happy self. Chub is attempting his first steps following his knee joint operation. It's still painful, but he realizes that every step he takes will bring him closer to a fresh start in life. The medical expenses for Los Angelic and Chang Chub are covered in full by Fujian Province's Aid Tibet Fund. Since the province first launched its assistance program for Kamdo in Tibet in 2016, it has invested nearly 400 million yuan in healthcare here. This support has facilitated some 3,000 operations. It has also served to establish a comprehensive prevention and treatment program for Kashin Beck disease. <laughs> Sung Lei is the chief cardiologist at Fu Wei Hospital under the Chinese Academy of Medical Sciences. He's also part of the seventh wave of medical specialists sent to Tibet. <laughs> It's Chinese New Year's Eve. The aid Tibet doctors are making dumplings in the hospital canteen ahead of a big dinner. Reunion is the theme of Chinese New Year. But the only family reunion these doctors will enjoy is via a video call. Hello. The Chinese New Year coincides with the Winter Olympics in Beijing. Song Lei's wife, who's also a doctor, moved into the Olympic Village a month ago as a member of the medical support staff. To ensure that their two children still enjoy a happy Chinese New Year's Eve, both pairs of grandparents have come to stay with them. The whole family planned to exchange New Year's greetings as the clock struck midnight. <laughs> But Song Lei's Chinese New Year's Eve is disrupted. A heart attack patient is being transferred from a local hospital. The patient is suffering from a blocked artery. The condition is life-threatening. 
急性心肌梗死的救治，特别强调这种时间，第一时间就是生命。The beeping of the instrument serves as a reminder to everyone in the operating theater that they are facing a race against time. The New Year video call with their mother has gone ahead as planned. But their father still hasn't answered. After two hours, the operation is a success. Sung Lei visits the ward to check on the patient's condition post surgery. Sung Lei is finally reminded that this is Chinese New Year's Eve and that he's promised to call his children. 疾病并不会挑时间发作。作为一个医生，我们身上应该时时刻刻都肩负这种责任。一次援藏，一生藏援，我们都会尽自己的责任，为西藏贡献一份力量。With their enhanced access to medical care, retirement services, and social support, people in Tibet are experiencing a significant improvement in their overall quality of life. As midnight gives way to the dawn of a new year. Sung Lei is looking forward to passing on very best wishes to his family. The headlines clashes continue in Sudan despite a new ceasefire that officially kicked in on Monday.
Turkey's third place presidential candidate endorses Erdogan for the country's upcoming runoff. With just 10 days to go, the US president and the House leader fail to reach an agreement on the debt ceiling. And a mountainous joins Chinese scientists to collect data on Mount Chumolangma, also known in the West as Mount Everest. Hello there, you're watching The World Today. I'm Kisteri Manikam. Our top story this hour. A new ceasefire in Sudan has officially started. The warring parties reached an agreement after talks in Jeddah. But there are reports of clashes minutes after the truce began. Nabal Moidin reports from Wat Madani. Well, a resident